Okay, in my Steam video I mentioned the proper installation of ATI drivers and uh, a few of you guys asked me to demonstrate how I did it. And uh, I figured this would be a great time to do this since I decided to install Linux Lite on my system. So, um, the night before last I turned on my screen capture while I was installing those drivers. And I'll go over all the details of proper installation of ATI drivers on an Ubuntu-based system, and we're going to do that right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Before we begin, we need to have a look at this website right here. This is wiki cchtml.com. This page took some doing to find because I really wanted to have a comprehensive guide on installing the uh, ATI drivers from the AMD website, but I found a lot of descriptions in the forums that basically uh, showed me half-measured ways of installing these. So you're going to need to visit this site here and then on this side of the screen here you will see that there are um, instructions for distributions uh, specific to what you may be running. In my case, I would want to have the Ubuntu instructions, and I would click here. Now, the link will be in the show notes for you guys, and these are the instructions that I actually followed for installing this on my uh, system. So now, without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and start playing the screen capture that I did the night before last, showing how I installed those drivers. Everything that you are seeing on the screen was done exactly as the documentation I just showed you states. And the first thing I'm doing here is issuing a command into the terminal to download some dependencies for converting the package that we download from the AMD ATI website into dev packages that can be easily installed on the system. Once this is done, a command is issued uh, wget to download the packages from the AMD ATI website. Now this may take a while depending on your internet connection speed. Now some of you may ask why would I want to install proprietary drivers on my system when the stock drivers that ship with Ubuntu work just fine? Well, the thing is if you're like me and you want to play some of the latest and greatest games that are being offered by Steam, you're going to need to use a proprietary driver. And interestingly enough, Steam just released my favorite game, X3 Reunion, and the two games that follow it, the X, the Terran Conflict, and X3 Albion Prelude. And these games run like a champ on my system, but they would not work very well with the regular Mesa drivers that ship with Ubuntu. So that's something to keep in mind. Once the file finishes downloading, then we need to send a command to the terminal, which will extract it. This next command makes it executable. This next command will generate the dev packages we need for installing the ATI driver onto the system. This takes a while as it's busy compiling. Now that this is finished, the next thing we're going to do is issue this command, which will install all of the dev packages we just generated. Now, if I've been reading correctly, one of the caveats is that if you're doing an update and it wants to update your kernel, you have to stop that update from happening because you're going to need to uninstall the ATI drivers reinstall the old XORG and MESA drivers, update your kernel, reboot, and then reinstall the ATI drivers. But the fix around this is I've opened up the Synaptic Package Manager and I just told it not to allow the kernel to update. Just ignore that. I'll show how to do that in a moment. Now that that driver has finished installing, we need to issue this command to configure the driver. 
Once that is done, it is safe to reboot your computer. Okay, once we've rebooted the computer, you should now be able to run this command in the terminal. FGLRX info. And it will tell you about your display, your vendor, and about your video card. And the next thing we'll want to do is we will want to run this to make sure we have a full 3D capability. And that is FGL underscore GLX gears. And as you can see, we have uh, some nice 3D rendering going on. Now, of course, it's playing a little bit choppy right now because uh, you can see from my CPU activities because I have screencasting going on and then a few extra resources. So it's understandable that this isn't performing as fast as uh, it would. All right, let's go ahead and close this. And as I mentioned, every time the kernel wants to upgrade, you're going to have to install and uninstall the driver. And that is a hassle to do. So this is what I did. I basically opened up Synaptic Package Manager and just type in Linux. And actually, I discovered this yesterday because when it wanted to do an update, uh, I selected Mark All Updates and I had a look at the listing of what it wanted to update. And... Um, I saw it wanted to update the kernel. I did the research and I was like, oh no, I'm not going to uninstall and reinstall drivers, especially with as much of a headache as this was setting this up for underscan. And I'll have a link in the show notes for that as well. But as you can see with this blue marking here, I have these packages locked. And to do this, all I do is just select the package and then go into package and put a check next to lock version. And that will lock it up not only did I um, uh, lock Linux uh, libc tac dev, I also locked Linux headers generic, Linux image generic, and Linux generic. This way, the system isn't going to try and download those latest uh, kernel images and cause me to have to uh, reinstall my video driver. The kernel is working just fine the way it is, so I don't see the need to allow it to update. Now, in a, maybe a month or so, I might decide, okay, now it's time to update the kernel, in which time it'll be convenient for me to be able to purge the ATI driver, reinstall XORG, update the kernel, and then reinstall uh, the ATI driver. But the nice thing is, though, because I generated my dev packages now, I can reuse those. So I don't have to go through the process of recompiling those dev packages all over again. But all of the details and everything you need to know about this are in the document documentation I showed you at the beginning of the video. Lastly, for those of you who are hooking up your computer to a high-definition television using the ATI driver, you're going to need to fix the underscan issue. Now, this is not just a Linux problem. I have also read online that Windows users are experiencing this same issue. Now, this website that I'm showing you here will uh, help you find that answer and address the issue. Because TVs have different makes, models, and that sort of thing, I can't help you with this. But this guide here will show you everything you need to know to fix the underscan and overscan problems with this. Installing the ATI driver can be somewhat of a hassle to do. But the thing is, once you have it working pro you know, once you have it all set up and working properly, it does run rather nice and it's great for gaming. And if you want to play the latest games on Steam, Unfortunately, this is a necessary evil, at least until the uh, Gallium Mesa drivers uh, that we have in Linux for the ATI cards improve. Mm -hmm.